So you can see that there is actually um, a convergence of the neoliberalism idea with sustainable development, which I have discussed um, two weeks ago, um, about how um, sustainable development in the 1990s are talking about technological transfer and economic growth through free trade um, to alleviate poverty um, in order to reduce environmental degradation. So it directly keep the inherent contradiction between environmental degradation and economic growth and talks about how economic growth is important to reduce environmental degradation. Um, if you remember in the 1980s and 1990s is when we have the capability approach and the participatory approaches arising in the international development field and they converge with neoliberalism to produce a kind of um, development scheme which is empowerment um, especially of women synonymous with microfinance and entrepreneurship so um, today when you talk about empowerment programs for women um, a lot of them really are really talking about access to microfinance and how to um, enhance income generations of women through entrepreneurship and skills training that kind of thing and uh, and also we talk about culture for sustainability in the 1990s a few weeks ago talks about how we can appropriate some of the cultural factors um, such as uh, costume handicrafts um, culture traditions uh, for uh, tourism or for uh, products for businesses and then um, this has actually transformed um, the view of women as victims of oppressions and poverty to women as ideal borrower because they um, generally repay their fund quicker and spending their money on more worthy cause compared to men. How is neoliberalism related to the environment? So before this, I have to talk about race to the bottom because you want to attract foreign direct investment. Countries have given tax exemptions or subsidized industry or loosen their labor regulations or environmental reg regulations in order to attract the foreign capital to invest in their country. So Harvey also talk about how um, the neoliberal ideas um, come in um, to the GOP. Um, transform environmental issues from a bipartisan issue in the 1970s under Nixon to a very polarized issue um, after um, Reagan um, and especially now um, in Trump era. Here one thing that um, climate change is real and we must take action towards climate change immediately and another one uh, very skeptical about climate change and thinking that climate change is not real or is not caused by human action. I believe all of you are very familiar with this climate change debate, um, so I will not elaborate too much here. So there have also been um, propositions of market and technological solutions to the environment. For example, we have um, carbon trading. Um, so carbon trading is the idea that um, each country or each company can be allocated certain um, carbon permits um, with a fixed quota and um, they can exchange this permit, they can buy and sell this permit. So the idea is that our market itself will achieve efficiency by having people who can um, use more efficient energy methods um, to sell those um, carbon permit to those who cannot innovate. And then we also have um, Payment for Ecosystem Services, PES. Some of you might have heard of this um, through RED or RED Plus. So RED or RED Plus are kind of international mechanisms. Um, so through this program, um, they um, collect money from voluntary donors or voluntary buyers um, um, and pay to um, people um, living in the forest to maintain those forests. So these red and red programs, um, this red and red plus program have been piloted in um, several countries, um, including Ecuador and also some Asian countries. And then um, we have wetland banking in the United States. Essentially, the idea is that um, if you destroy um, an a portion of wetland, you should also restore a similar amount of wetland in other places. Um, and then we have eco-modernism and green growth. Um, so for example, um, the idea of eco-modernism, I extract from an eco-modernist manifesto. There's actually such thing um, as this thing on the internet. Um, 
It says here, intensifying many human activities, particularly farming, energy extraction, forestry, and settlement, so that they use less land and interfere less with the natural world is the key to decoupling human development from environmental impacts. So the idea is that um, we want to continue to modernize, we want to continue to grow, we want to continue to develop. Um, and um, but we want to reduce the environmental impacts. So the solutions to it is to intensify those activities. Of course, there are tons of criticisms about um, these market approaches to environment. For example, for wetland banking, some areas have um, bigger biodiversity value than the other areas. So um, restoring a wetland elsewhere doesn't necessarily restore um, the value of the original wetland. For so towards the end of this lecture, I just want to take a moment to reflect upon our situation now of um, COVID-19. Um, so COVID-19 essentially become a global pandemic um, due to um, mobility of people and globalization. So my questions here are, has the COVID-19 pandemic provided any new understandings on economic inequalities and globalization? Um, particularly, we see a lot of um, unemployment, um, um, during this time and also how some people uh, have to keep working and do not have the luxury of staying at home. And also another question I have is, do you think it will have any future impact on the process and idea of neoliberalization? Will it strengthen, weaken or change it? 